mates, brothers, and other ocean goers. Today, you can sleep, so now I'm unveiling a brand new series called Ocean Man Saves Your Six. I've got a save file here from someone who didn't want their name to be read out. So I was going to refer to them as an anonymous sender, but then in, under preferred name, they said, call me what you want. You know, like that song, so I guess that's their name now. <laughs> nah, it's not their real name, but I don't know, I thought it was funny. What needs to be done, they said, the resources are being depleted a lot and they were getting re ready for a siege. Version of the game, it says version 64, but my friend, you're actually, you're actually playing on version 65. Just wanted to let you know. In the save description, they've said, Amoebian City. They're just a newbie that watched some of my videos, trying to get a stable economy, which is troublesome for them. And I can check out anything that they're doing wrong, maybe to help out other players. They keep running out of stuff. So the balance is certainly off in terms of stuff coming in and out. They were getting ready for a possible war to take over neighbors. I can say anything I would like, and they're super glad for the help. They've outlined a bunch of stuff, trying to get a stable economy, running out of stuff, trying to balance in and out, right? And getting ready for a possible war. I don't want to do the entire war for you, because then, like, that's the fun part, right? I'll just show you how I prepare for war with your save, and I'll take over, like, maybe your first weak neighbor, and then hopefully that'll show you how you could do it for yourself and then how you could have fun with that whole process. There's the save. They did consent to making the download link available for everyone in the video description. So look forward to that. If you can hear the harvester in the background, I'm so sorry. I might have to re-record. Here's the Amoebian city. Let's just take a quick look around. They got some nice waterworks going over there. Bit of mining in the middle. And I see that, yeah, we have a bit of mixed industry, a bunch of pastures all around. And yeah. It's a very wide settlement, I would say. Oh, I didn't even see up there. <laughs> well, there we go. That's a cool map. I like that map. All right, there we go. Hopefully that didn't just dox me. If we turn off all of those filters, that is a very cool looking city. And hopefully you didn't ruin the water, the coastline. I just, I kind of don't like how the land juts out, but this is for the sake of efficiency, I'm assuming. Yeah, 100% fertility. I, res I can respect that. You got quite a bit of varying farms, I see. Cotton, grain, fruit, etc. That's nice to see. There's a bunch of fishing there. Some amoeba. Oh no, globedines. Whoops. <laughs> Metals and I think smithies, yeah? Yeah. This one's making armor, this one's making weapons, this one's making tools. Right. And what are you what are you mining here? You got ore, coal, coal, stone. I like your roads. Very nice diagonal roads. Actually I'm gonna just make that diagonal as well. Go ahead. I hope you don't mind this. I just think that yeah, when you had have these roads diagonal, it probably looks better with this. And I see you've built the right building. You built mud walls everywhere, which is what Amoebias prefer. But you even have a few pools around. Nice. That looks good, actually. That was probably expensive, though, wasn't it? Because <laughs> uh, it takes cut stone, right? Okay. And up here, it's all the hatcheries. Yeah, you built a nice school. That's really good. Oh, I see the problem there is there's not enough paper for them, yeah. And the fish. Okay, your food days. Two food days. Pine is scary. Yeah, not really up for that. It's 
paper there's a single how many paper makers you, you have a single paper maker yeah not enough paper i see so up here is like food production down here is like industrialization i'm assuming where are your admin buildings you have one i see a lab that's not quite what i'm looking for I'm gonna assume you don't have an admin building. Hold on, let me take it. Yeah. So this is the world map here. You are a Thusa, I'm assuming. Yep. And you have two weak neighbors. Two hundred sixty soldiers, and then this guy zero soldiers. Maybe I should demonstrate. Taking out Winstar. Winstar. This one here. Since they're stronger. Or maybe I should take out Linabra and then you'll have free reign over these guys. And all that. I don't want to put you in a worse position that you than you already are in, right? Once you take this region, obviously you'll be bordering this nation to your right, this one to your left, and then this one down here if you take Rosenberg or Instrag. So Instrag has zero soldiers, very nice. And the Nabra also has zero, yeah. And it looks like you haven't annoyed anybody too much, although the amount of wealth you have is, yeah, concerning concerning them not concerning as in like a bad way more like a oh this guy's kind of look like kind of looking like a juicy target you know <laughs> All right, there's an easier way to do this you just hold left click here zoom out and then boom that makes everything diagonal i hope you don't mind it has rounded corners now and also changed all the rows to be rounded so as you can see here, some of the roads are still dirt roads. I don't know if that's intentional. But what you could do is you could remove them, right? You could remove them. Or actually what you need to do is enable maintenance if you want them to be properly maintained, right? I feel like some of this you want to be properly maintained, like this one here that's connecting. The road's over. Some of these. Okay, I'm just gonna enable maintenance for everything. So same trick, I'm holding left click. Dragging it across the whole map. Boom. The reason it slows down is because you just told it to do something to the entire map, right? But once you let go, it's gonna, it's gonna work. If I let this play, the janitors will go and be fixing the roads pretty sure yeah you got some okay cool yeah so they're fixing the roads now you said in and outs right so i'm assuming one of them's definitely paper i'm left clicking on the paper icon and then i'm hovering the mouse over here and it says yeah that you're producing a lot less paper than you're consuming right and that's because you've made these two schools here. Yeah, and whereas we have a single paper maker and it's only making 45 paper. We actually have a worker deficit, There's less people than required doing all sorts of jobs. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm, I'm just gonna turn off both of these schools for now. Because right now, we don't have the workforce to teach. We don't have enough teachers, and also, they don't have enough materials, right? That might sound a bit familiar to some of you. <laughs> but in Oceania, we do things a bit differently. We just leave the children uneducated until we have enough money or anything to just 
feed everybody, right? Enough resources. <laughs> I don't know if that's better. And then as for food, if we look at the access. So I've right clicked here on the plebeians amoebias, right? And left click this and it comes up with their information. Amoebias really like eating fish, fruit, and eggs. If we close out of here, we go to environment. They like having a lot of stored fish. You know how up here we're going all sorts of food? Instead of this grain, we don't need this grain. I'm not sure what you've been using it on. Because you're producing something out of it. Oh, you're making it for drinks. Yes, okay. So you're making drinks out of grain. I see, I see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the Amoebians mostly eat fish because they have a production bonus towards fishing, right? They don't actually like growing. Actually, yeah, they don't mind it, but they also suck at growing. So if you wanted to grow anything, I reckon Cretonius do it for you, right? Either as a citizen or as a slave. Your amoebias should just be working in a fishery or in the Globedine pastures. And anything else we can tax from the world map. So yeah, if anything, I'll wait till the next harvest and we just turn off the grain and the fruit. And then I'll, sh yeah, I'll show you how to tax from the world map. And that should sort out... Yeah, you won't need those farms anymore. Well, you still need a cotton farm, maybe. As you see, you're using... You're growing like 83 cotton a day on average. If we zoom out and find your tailor, I think this is it. Yeah, it's this one. I oh, know your weavers. Each weaver is taking up 125 a day. You're actually using a lot more cotton than than you're producing. 250 cotton compared to 83 a day, right? I've identified the key weaknesses here. It's mostly, I'd say, wood, food sources, and production of goods, right? Namely, paper, I would say. Because right now, yeah, you see, you're making a lot of wood products. And that can be all sorts of things like furniture, paper, etc. You have this carpenter, this carpenter, and this one ma makes shields, okay. Oh wow, your raid chance pretty high up. That's because of your money. I'm taking it, yeah. Because of your money. I'm gonna use your money to buy us some metal and paper. As for your technologies, you unlocked a decent chunk. That's pretty good. All right, so with your money here, I'm going to grab enough metal to fix uh, not fixed to build this paper maker so we just need 200 so i click on metal and this import settings right special orders and we want best price 200 is how much 104 000. Uh, a bit expensive but you have a lot of money and your money is actually contributing to your raid chance, right? Hopefully we don't get raided. Where is that metal? There it is. Be arriving soon. Yeah, you'll see it show up in the capital. You have three entrances to your capital. The metal right there. This is the guy, as you can see, the metal is going up. Delivering the metal into the storage here. I just realized that this metal is probably going to be used in your smithies. So let me just turn those off real quick. Yeah, so you've been refining 
Good. But you, I don't think you've been increasing the production of the raw goods first, if that makes sense. So like, metal here is being used up at a much greater pace than you've been producing it. So if we look at the metal smelter, first of all, they're missing coal. Which means we're not getting enough coal from, yeah, from these mines. I'm going to keep the blacksmiths off. Also, we're not storing... Nice, 69 crates. We're not storing all these weapons anywhere. So we can't actually keep stock of how much we have. Yeah, that's what we're making. You do have tools though, which is very nice. This is actually excessive right now. At this point in the game, 1,500, you can actually just get away with not giving them cut stone, but I'll leave that alone. I don't want to touch it. I'm not sure why you set the permission to not be full. Some of these services, I think you can, I think you have the resources to upgrade. For example, all your wells. All of your wells can be upgraded. And that's going to make them a lot happier. So you could individually click upgrade here. Well, I'm, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is upgrade them all. So you click bulk. You see this little button here next to bulk. You can bulk upgrade all of them. And there we go. They all just became stone, right? It's going to increase the fulfillment of this thing right here. You're going to be much happier. And you can do the same thing for the other services. Importing fish as a Namibian city with all this water just feels wrong. Another thing is, I see you've upgraded some of them. Some of these fisheries. We'll just upgrade the rest. And we'll max them out. Uh, let's turn this one off. It's the most isolated, I would say. All right, we're making 600 and 600 plus fish a day. Oh, all right, here we go. Yeah, we're not <laughs> nearly producing enough food. And that's probably because your food rations, you've increased it to double, right? So each tick of this increases the amount of food they eat by 100%. Uh, one, obviously they eat like normal amount. This doubles it. This triples it, and then this quadruples how much they eat. You're not quite ready for this. I would drop it down to one. And they're going to be a bit upset, right? But inst instead, what we could do is fulfill these other services here. Oh, goodness. Are you crime? Brother, 56.9% crime. My guy. <laughs> so because the cr the reason the crime is so high is I mean you do have a very harsh punishment but I have a feeling that the feeling you don't have any of these so it's under infrastructure law guard post right let me zoom out yeah so you have the punishment and this is a good one. And I'm assuming you have an execution square. What's that? What's it called? Uh, I think it's called scaffolds. Yeah. I'm assuming you have them somewhere. Yeah, you have them spread out, but you don't have the dudes to arrest them. And that's why there's a lot of crime. And maybe, just maybe, they're the ones stealing all your stuff. But that's probably not it. <laughs> yeah, with this big bank that you've saved up, I'm going to spend it all. We're not producing leather armor, so we're just going to have to buy some. I'm going to spread these out across the map. You can move these changes around later if you want. I don't mind. <laughs> it is your save. This corner. Perfect corner. I hope you weren't wanting to put in anything else there. It's a great spot for it. And I'm going to disallow one of these cut stone things so that we can have cut stone and then that'll save us some money 
We'll just buy a bunch of leather armor. I don't know how much we need. As you can see, we've reclaimed some of the cut stone from furniture. Now we've got leather armor coming in. Yeah, we'll build this. And these dudes will actually arrest people. You don't even need a dungeon just yet. You just need the people exist. All mine here. Let's reduce it, because you're not actually able to use it all. So you don't have enough coal, so we need to prioritize coal. Now that we've made another paper maker, we're running out of wood. So you have 48 wood cutters. I would only use them thematically for practical use. You're better off manually felling trees, right? Falling trees? Whatever it is. Like so. So now you have 53 people that can go and do that. This is the better way. I would I would do this instead of wood cutting. So I would say like every year or so. We're in year 36. I would say just take a mental note of your wood stores. And then just have a massive warehouse. Or something. Or like just store a bunch of wood, right? And once you see this green bar reaching a certain level and you just tell everyone to cut wood and yeah you see this we're finally arresting people the guard outposts have been built they have decent coverage i could improve it further but yeah i want us to just focus on trying to get the first region for you infrastructure admin let's go and make an admin building doesn't have to be a massive building. Contrary to what I used to do. That is a cool design you've done for the woodcutters though. Yeah, I won't delete the woodcutters. For that reason. Kinda wanna turn one of these schools into the admin building. You still have the design. Alright, there we go. A hundred percent. Now we just fill in the... ...doors. All around. I think we can afford to put in some more doors. There we go. 800 capacity. It's not my best design. But... It'll have to do. Yeah, this. I don't think this is very efficient. This little admin building I've made. It's okay. I wanted to be aligned with your aesthetic here that you've produced. We finally harvested this grain farm. It's time to turn it off. This one off as well. We'll keep the cotton going. 195 cotton per day. But we definitely needed the grain farms off. As for the fruit farms, I think this is also terrible. Yeah, we are not making enough. Nah, let's turn that off. Leave those farms there though. Now. I think we should just increase our fishing production. As you can see, your law has improved from 0 to 24%. And your crime, your crime has fallen. It just, yeah, there we go. 28%. It was at 50 something percent before. Gone down by 30. And then our food production rate, 968. Your fish production alone has now triumphed over the consumption rate, right? It's pretty good. You no longer have to import fish and you should never have to because this is one of the best traits, right? They're the best at fishing. You have plenty of water. You should make use of this efficiency. You should like really hone in on fishing as the Amevians. 
and polishes as well. Glowdy and polishes. They love doing this job. All this other stuff, you should just import. Which honestly, I might set up for you. And get rid of these farms. Yeah, I just want to turn them off. I don't want to remove them. Although it kind of kind of hurts my eyes. <laughs> like how the land just sticks out like that. Yeah. We'll see. I might go crazy with this, you know? Oh, but now we have the admin building. Producing admin. We have 68. That should be fine. We have 272,000. It's time to take your first settlement, okay? So you see Lenabra here. Oh, they have coal. That's perfect. That's very nice. These guys have clay. Ew. And the fertility around here is terrible. As one would expect, yep. Let's take Lenabra, why not? Okay. So you have an army, yeah? Mercenaries, this is what you do. Mercenaries, and then you hire... Enough people to outnumber the garrison, I would say. Or actually, hold on, let me see. So Lenabra here. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. You're gone. You're warlike anyway, you know? Need a warrior's end. Let me save. Hold on, let me save. Just in case I mess this up. There we go. Right? So, I've clicked the army. I've left clicked here again, besiege. Now we just assault it. Bam. That bar is full, it usually means you'll win. Now unfortunately... Oh, I did say we'd raise it. No, we need people to tax. We'll just keep the mercenaries there, so mercy... Occupy. And this way, we can build, and we'll have people attacks and everything. I don't know if Amoebias really hate anybody. In particular, because they hate everybody equally, right? They like our themes, kind of. <laughs> yeah, so they somewhat like our themes. What's important is people like them. Let's get rid of that. Tonians hate us. Dorians like us. But they don't like our themes. Our themes like us. Humans are whatever. Telepies are whatever. So the only people I can think of that we should get rid of are Cretonians. So they hate us and Garthemis. And then maybe we should also get rid of the Dondorians. Because they hate Garthemis, but we they like us. Like It's kind of bad. I mean they don't like living here anyway. So their species biome is 0.16% there, right? There's only 9 of them? Yeah, kill them. Oh no. Tonians. This is their species biome. But they hate our guts, so they'll just kill them. That leaves us with more room for Garthemis, humans, us, and Telapis. Now, do we need Telapis in this region? <laughs> do we need Telapis ever? The forest nearby? There's forests up there. Nah, just kill them all. Now, there we go. We're only letting in Amoebias, humans, and Garthemis. So I built, I clicked here, and I clicked on these three buildings. 
you'll always need these three buildings. This one, this one is the village center, so you, you actually like can build things, right? You get a workforce, you have infrastructure points. This is very important. More important than workforce, but less important than admin. Admin, you absolutely need. It has to be, I would say you're not safe until you have at least a hundred over. So right now we're at 36, that's not good. Because some of your buildings need admin. If you run into negatives, your buildings will stop working. Any of these are negative, they'll just stop working. That's terrible. People will start dying. The people you want to live, that it is. <laughs> That's kind of not good for you. So, clicked here again, and I'm taxing coal here, right? Taxing coal. And as you can see, the health is at 2.55 going to drop as your population increases. And if you hover over here, it says your target, right? Target population. It's going to try to reach that population. To upgrade it, you need 1,200. So the target population here is enough for you to get a level 2 once they've you know, popped out that many people. And your people are super loyal right now. That's because we, you know, just kill everybody. Yeah, we're gonna need to wait for them to support us, support our rule. It's gonna affect our loyalty. To increase loyalty, what you need is these buildings here, these three buildings. I would build the stands. It's pretty generic. Everybody likes it. Plus two to loyalty to everybody. It's very good. I'm gonna move the army out. We're gonna move to here, I think, in Strag. It's got decent fertility. It's not really making anything else. It's mostly open land. And it's home to a bunch of filthy Cretonians, right? 122 Cretonians. Yeah, let's just go and kill them. It's gonna make us border a big kingdom here. So yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> we'll establish trade. There's neutral faction on our right. Let's get trade. Because they're larger. They want more for the trade. Trade is going to increase their opinion of us, right? Like here, you guys have a plus two, because we're trading with them. We want the same thing for our new neighbor here. Now these guys, I think this is probably, let's move our army out of the border of it. Uh, they're still disloyal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the cheapest mercenaries and then leave them in there for a bit. Yeah, their upkeep is only like under three grand. That should be perfect. Yeah. I'll just stand there in this region. I'm going to take Instrag. So click on your army. Besiege. Yes, I want to declare war. Assault it this one I'm gonna mercy again occupy and we kill everyone that we don't like build these three buildings again see these red arrows right that means you'll get like nothing really instead of grain which we can't eat I'm actually gonna get a fruit orchard and we're going to use these fruits. Instead of eating them, we'll use them for your breweries. And with a spare workforce and build points, what you can do is you can get a nursery. 
What does the nursery do? It increases your workforce, right? There we go. As you can see in the population here, 942 target. It's not enough. You need 1,200 to upgrade your town hall, right? So you click on your well. So you click on the well. Read it. Now at 1,100, you're going to need a bit more than that. So I'll let it tick over. And once we get enough Garthemis in here, yeah. You know, upgrade the Pollock Baths again. There you go. 1,300 people can live here now. And they have enough health. They should have enough health, right? To offset the population. Now we just wait for these regions to become loyal. Now I'm not killing all these people just to be mean, right? We're doing it so that we can eventually actually conscript a coherent army. Does that make sense? Because if you have, if you leave everybody alive, you're taking recruits from all of them, conscripts from all of them, you'll never be able to make an, a full unit of 150 because there's just not enough people unless you have like a massive empire. But yeah, this is what I do. If you're Garthemis, it, it makes it so much easier. Which you'll hopefully see as well later on this week. And that's how you take your settlements. The support's going to go up very slowly. What you could inst what you could do instead is you can get some you can make it an embassy and send the people that work there out ahead of time to first of all scout all of these things. So this tells you what sort of stuff is use is good in there. I think this one tells you the the buildings, and then this one tells you the garrison. So the emissary, emissaries are very useful in that way, and you can also send them to make people happy. If we have a look at your coal, you're now taxing 409 coal from the region. That is plenty. And we can now end domestic production of it, right? So... You do have an upgrade of... Yeah, you did upgrade it though. But still, it's terrible. The output... Yeah, I'm sorry, but we don't need this coal anymore. Because it was producing like... 180. We're getting 409. Just from taxes. I have a feeling now we're going to need a, a bunch of ore. So they're mining like 54 ore, right? 55... I don't think that's enough to even... It's enough to fill out one of these. Oh, this one's upgraded, I see, okay. Let's turn off this smelter. Everybody in there. Yeah, we don't have enough ore. 87 ore. 87, no, it's 137 per ore item. So we should probably just import it. If we look at the metal. 380, right? And our coal, we have a bunch of coal already. So 40. Plus, no. 26, because we're already getting coal. So 26, if we sold the coal, plus 137 is 163, I think. And one metal is 380. So you're doubling the value that you're getting just from that. Yeah, it's one to one, yeah? You actually have some upgrades. It's making it more efficient. It's it's more it's more worker efficient, but less but like no difference in resource efficiency. If that makes sense. 
Unless I'm misunderstanding here. But anyway. So we need to be importing ore. To help make our metal. And honestly, maybe even... Just turn off the ore mine. Putting them somewhere else. Tools of 522. There's the tools. Two to two. Two metal. Two coal. Sell price of metal and sell price of coal. So 500. That's 26 times two, so... 552? Actually not even... It's cheaper to just buy tools and just make plate armor instead or weapons <laughs> you're better off making weapons and then selling the excess that you don't need and buying the tools that you do need turn them all off let's turn on this one and let's import coal so that's infrastructure logistics import depot here we go let's import ore up to 25% of your total capacity, so that's 750. Because so if we look here, we use 74 or every day is from this one. We turn this one on. We'd be using like probably the same amount of. Yeah, we'd use 50. Oh, it's going up. 64. So in total, we're using like a hundred and thirty something, hundred thirty six, hundred thirty seven, or a day. I like to have a store of like, well, like five times that, four times that at least. So one thirty six times four is what? All right, let's say at least six hundred. So you import 600 ore, that'll give you enough ore, ideally, to maintain these guys. Maintain production for at least four days, so one season. That's not bad. How much would it cost you though? That's going to cost you like 5,400 dinars a day. So you're going to need to... Denaris, you're going to need to offset that cost somehow. So one thing you could do is you could sell excess coal, right? Or you could sell excess paper, because we're making a, a bunch of paper now. Don't necessarily need it all. You actually need a few more janitors, I would say. You're having some degradation issues. Probably because I told them to build the roads again. So you can click convert here and you can actually just highlight everything. All of these dirt roads to be rebuilt as stone. Which takes a lot longer to degrade. I don't think you need to upgrade those ones. I, you probably want to rebuild them. But the internal roads, yeah, we'll just convert all of those into stone. We want to export meat, all of it. We want to export more livestock. They spoil pretty quickly. Eggs, we don't want to export. Fish, we don't want to import ever again. Like I said, it's, it's a bit strange, right? Unnecessary. What we should export is paper if it reaches above... I don't know, 60%. We might even want to export fish if it reaches 90%. Now we're importing ore, right? Look at that. We're actually having enough of it. Both metal smelters working. I'm going to increase. I'm going to, I'm going to upgrade that one. And turn off this ore mine as well. Now that we have some stored and increase the import level because we just upgraded this we still have over double the coal taxes that we 
than we use anywhere in our city, so. Enough auto employ here and just put everyone into making the swords. How many swords are they making? Where are they sending them, these two? Oh, okay. Turn down the fill. You'll never need this many in the early game. Like, oh, this is an early game, mid game. You don't need all of these stored in here. So what these do is they supply your world map armies, right? These armies here. So this army here, all the supplies are gonna supply these people here, right? They're on the world map if you recruit them and train them up and stuff. You actually need to supply them clothes, drinks, and rations first. Because if you just give them weapons, and you're not feeding them, clothing them, giving them alcohol, they're just gonna run away. They're gonna defect from your army. Because they're hungry. You don't want to store these right now? Like all of this stuff, used domestically. You just need that in storages, right? Warehouses. I see, yeah, they're just militia. I have no melee training. Let's edit them all, let's make them all... These guys, there we go. Spears are the best weapon. <laughs> it's not even sarcasm, guys. Plate armor, shields, and short swords. You've actually produced so many. Also, oh, wait, are these guys the same? Oh, you want them fully- this, these are your elite elite. Let's give them- let's give them this icon. Call them heavy infantry. <laughs> you actually have so much armor made and everything. <laughs> These guys here, you know what? Let's not even give them armor. Uh, that's reserved for our our chads here. I'm gonna upgrade these. Gonna, so I see you've limited them. I'm not sure why you limited them here. You can actually just bulk limit them here. Or just have less formations. Actually, next to the military supplies, there should definitely be a guard post. And what we're gonna do is export swords. How many do we even need? I think it's like... 2,400 swords. Let's just drop that down to 2,400. Yeah, in this early game, just drop it down. Here's another thing that you can actually afford to upgrade. Just fight pits. So if we look at the services. Your fight pits is at 70%, but once you upgrade all of these... Like that, boom. This is gonna increase because you just double the quality of the fight pits. You're like 30 people wanting to join any moment. It's gonna go up. It's only gonna go up from here. You're making so much fish. Oh, right, here we go. I've made a little embassy building here for you. 34 employees. I should be perfectly... Fine. Yeah, we, we don't we don't nearly get enough wood in here. <laughs> let's get let's just import it. You know what I mean? So how much you use two thousand five hundred in a quarter. You need to use imports, depots, your offset, your usage of the raw goods, and then you just sell stuff, yeah. You had some set up. I think it was really just the fish hampering you, like the food. As you can see now, we're like, we have 10 food days and it's just climbing. Yeah, because you don't need to increase the food rations. I would not do that until like much later into the game. Okay, as for the drinks, the breweries, you can change the recipe here. So I clicked on the brewery, change recipe, boom. Boom, and that's kind of auto employ. 
We'll see how much fruit they need each. So they each need a hundred and what sixty. 182 fruit each. So with the taxes from the region, we can actually only get we only get 112. Fortunately for us, this icon here means that regions can be upgraded on the world map. So this region here. And level it up. And then you want to increase the health so that they don't die from a plague. With this excess, with these build points, you could upgrade the coal mine. I might do just that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to get a builder that's going to get us more build points. And then with this, with these build points, we'll get a nursery, upgrade a nursery, upgrade a builder. There we go. Now we have one more. We have a single build point left. A bunch of workers, so let's get a garrison. And let's upgrade the loyalty building. So it's not quite going to reach 2000 population, which is the next thing. But I just want to stabilize the game for you. Like, I don't want to play it for you, obviously. Now, as for this region, we could get grain or we can just upgrade the orchards. I'm going to upgrade the orchards, maybe even get herbs from it. Where are you getting herbs from? I'm assuming you're just foraging for it, yeah. Well, you can make your own rations, which we would need eventually, right? You have 75 conscriptable. You can actually make half a unit of humans. You need to have the things to support them first. So what she could do is make rations out of herbs and fish, which you should have a bunch of. And in this way you can feed your armies. But I'll let you decide that. I'm just gonna increase the fruit production, give them a garrison. Garrison's gonna protect them from an enemy attack. It's gonna help, but not very much. Because these other neighbors are really big. Embassy here. I'm still building it. It's almost done. Let's let in all these people. 93 people just wanted to join. As you can see, the consumption rate went up. I'm going to get more fisheries going. So we've increased your f population. I'm going to increase your food production again. The fruit taxes is going to offset both breweries. Yeah, it's capable. Almost. There's a bit of there's a bit of a gap. Should we, it should be fine if we just drop this down. There we go. Surely that's enough, yeah. Perfect. Now it's positive. Oh, it's gonna flip flop between the two. What you could do is just turn one off, turn one brewery, brewery off. See how that works for you. And you'll have enough fruit to stockpile some. First, we build this though, upgrade the fishery. And how's that fishery going? Yes. You can feed your people entirely off of fish. At this point, yeah. 628. Your regions, your two regions here are very loyal to you. They're not gonna break these guys. It says minus 1.3. There's, there's none of them. It's fine. And now you have emissaries, right? Actually, our admins dropping it's not good uh let's more people in it i've maxed out your smithies so one of your smithies is making tools and this is boosting your tool production so it's like a 
it's looping it, you know? And we have a bunch of excess, so let's upgrade the laboratories. Admin. Why not? Paper maker's gonna be just fine, I think. Yeah, we're selling excess. We're producing like double than we need. Admin's climbing. So from now on, all I want you to do is make sure your admin's fine, right? Make an army on the world map. So army supply depots, you're going to need to supply clothes, drinks, and rations. Increase this as your army grows. And you're going to need some more army supply depots for the weapons and stuff. Your crime is now only 11%. The law is still pretty low, but we're producing all sorts of goods. Your trade is now... You're making 86,000 every quarter, I think. And every two days, you're making 83,000, I think. Unless I miscounted there. You need wood, just manual tell them to manually cut down trees like that. Anyone spare? These 11 people? We'll go and work. Cut down those trees. Yeah, we'll probably have too many people working in the smithies right now. Yeah, but overall you've done a decent job with the city. You just needed some help making it stable. At this point, I think to increase your ore production, increase your metal production, Import more ore, or try to take a region on the map. Try to take a region on the map that has ore. It doesn't seem like there's any nearby... Oh, you landed on a place with some. Okay, I see. More efficient attacks it. On the world map. Eventually build up the supply of stuff and make... an actual army... with your conscripts from the world map. And you can change the buildings here... by just clicking down. This costs money, by the way, to upgrade stuff. Yeah, like the, you see it says 3,900. It costs money to make changes, but you get re money refunded when you cancel it. So 210. Yeah, it went up by 2k. It's gone down by 2k. You never want to go below 100k, I would say. The 100k should be safe. The main things that take your money are mercenaries if you leave them alone for too long. Like, you'll just have no money if you're importing too many goods and not offsetting it with the exports. Also happens, you just click here to see like what's going on. And click on this banner here to talk to them. You flatter the king, you, pre you pretty much just tell him like the, the great and everything, like positive affirmations, right? And eventually, that's going to give you a bunch of opinion. Like they're going to like you. Yeah, as you can see, the flattery there, 0.12. It must be faster if you send everybody there. Imagine having 30 people arrive to your court from a neighboring nation just telling you how great you are. Surely you'd see something's up. But yeah, like plus 2.93. I think it caps out at like five, at four or something, four or five. I would probably start flattering these other guys as well. Because you will eventually be neighbors with them. You're a smart cookie, you got this. Pause the game. So you're 40, I think I played like what, five years? Play the save for two hours, it's time to save it and give it back to you. Authorized by Ocean Man of Oceania.